Well, my next guest shares in those thoughts and frustrations, I think. Please welcome to the show, Keith Fitzgerald. Keith, I couldn't believe it. I mean, this is when the Trump era, you know, when they said, oh, we're going to allow these guys to open up to 25% capacity. I just said, shrug my shoulder. Why? I mean, you're just going to let them go out of business slower. This is not, this is, this is going to be, you know, an anchor when they, they need a life preserver. And so now, having said that, and a lot of them have, have failed, and if I have a friend that opens up a restaurant without a drive through window, Boy, we're going to have some words, because that's the only way you're going to survive going forward. But what are your thoughts on all this? I mean, it just seems like they keep doubling down when they could easily take another off-ramp. Well, I got to tell you, you know, there's two things that come to my mind here, Scott. Number one, we were all born in the middle of the night, but it was not last night. The problem with these guys inside the Beltway is they're more concerned about getting reelected and posturing and bickering than they are with actually helping America. Most of those folks have businesses, they came from businesses where they bill by the hour. So they equate spending more hours in the office with making more money. That's very different reality for anybody who runs a, a business, point. for anybody who drives a truck, for anybody who cuts hair, for anybody who makes pizza, we have to sell more to make more. So our effort is directly correlated to the amount of money we bring in. I once got into it with an elected official who shall remain nameless, but was absolutely clueless. They told me to go out and hire more people because it was the right thing to do. And I said, yeah, you're absolutely right. Where am I supposed to get the money to pay for those people? Blank look, crickets. That person couldn't wait to get away from me in the cocktail party. Yeah, and you know what? They're the ones that will look you straight in the eye and say, minimum wage, the more that we can give the minimum wage, the better every, the better off everybody's going to be. The economy will be wealthier the higher that minimum, wa minimum wage goes. All right, how about this? Let's just make it 100 bucks an hour then. We'll all be wealthier. Yeah, and while we're at it, if they're talking about this, this tax unrealized gains business, how come every American doesn't get a credit for all the losses they're running? Because that's our government, theoretically. Exactly right. So then, on top of that, you and I both know that Elon Musk owns a lot of shares of Tesla or, or whatever big billionaire's got another a bunch of shares. And we know that they're going to have to sell some of those to pay this tax. What do you think the average trader is going to do knowing that a big trader's got a lot to sell? Well, that's the <laughs> oldest game in the book. If you throw blood in the water, the sharks show up. It's, so, it's you still know, legal in Congress, by the way. <laughs> I know, exactly. I mean, I just, oh, boy, I tell you what. It's one of those things where you almost don't know where to get started because Hollywood could not come up with a script that looks like this. This is beyond the born identity. This is beyond Wall Street. This is beyond Gordon Gecko. These folks have no idea how real money works. So that leaves all of us in the small business community with a real conundrum. The only way out of this is through through it. Now, personally, I have a lot of faith in America. I have the most faith in small businesses. And as tough as this is, I've learned one thing over the years, and you never, ever bet against a motivated individual, particularly a small business owner. Love it. And we had a great a great oil analyst on earlier today, earlier today uh, and she was on uh, with uh, CNBC, too. And, and she said, look, this oil reserve, the strategic, you know, which is now a political oil reserve, not a strategic oil reserve, oh. right? Yeah, and she said, I, I asked her what she thought it would do in the long term, and her, her point was really good. It's going to drive prices a little bit lower, just below that level where it incentivizes people to drill. So it's actually going to do more harm than good by letting that much oil on a million barrels a day for 180 days than it would be if we just would have solved the problem instead of flipping a switch, uh, we, you know, if we put our people back to work instead of doing that you know, one-off uh, release. So it was interesting to get that perspective that this actually is going to add to the problem, not help, not get us out of the problem. Well, of course it's going to add to the problem. These guys failed basic economics classes. You don't <laughs> impute, you don't confiscate wealth and have a war on success if you want to build your way out. Last time I checked, more money will not erase debt. It just contributes to it. So, you know, whether it's operations, whether it's taxes, whether it's drilling, you know, this is one dumb decision after another that flies completely in the face of basic economics. Here's an idea. Why not have an executive order starting with the White House that every sitting representative of the United States Congress has to to pass economics 101. I don't care. Pick the professor, pick the curriculum, whatever you want to do. Don't argue about those things, but commit to a basic economics class. And if they don't pass, they're immediately kicked out. They lose their pension. They lose their ability to make decisions. Yeah, that's exactly what I said when I heard that they're going to allow these restaurants to be back open to 25% capacity when they need to be open to 85% capacity to make any money. What are yep. you thinking? Where, you know what, as the producer said to me, where's the science in that? That's just there a finger in, the, uh, finger in the air to try to gauge public policy. So that's, that's one of those biggest problems. So I have to ask you, we've had more and more calls for, you know, 50, 50, 50 point, uh, point basis, cut, uh, basis hikes. Um, 
we've heard maybe four in a row. What do you think about that? <laughs> I, I've heard, you know, we had city call for four in a row in the next four meetings. Half percent hikes. That's two percent altogether. Obviously, my math is pretty good. Um, where do you where do you, where does that put us with stock market? Where does that put us with the economy? What do you think? Well, I think it requires, and this is actually a good thing because you know success by its very definition includes failure. So there's going to be some pullbacks, which means if you miss great stocks like Microsoft or Tesla or Apple or Nvidia or any of these other things on the last great run, odds are you're probably going to get another shot at it. And if you've got anything from a three to five to a ten year horizon, history suggests you're probably going to do pretty darn good, even if the Fed does something stupid. Or well, let me rephrase that: when the Fed does something else stupid, <laughs> because they've already caused the next three crises, Scott. Right, you're right. And I'll end it on this one. Everybody gets all, you know, worried about timing, Keith. And you and I both know, if you would have bought the high of the of the stock market yep. every year since 1929, you'd be a billionaire over again. So really appreciate you being yep. on. That's an awesome way to end a Friday. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Keith Fitzgerald coming to us from the West Coast. They're not all crazy out there. He's in Seattle. All right. When looking at the markets. I'm Hi, it's Keith here. Thanks for checking out today's highlight clip. What'd you think? Did I make sense? Is there something you'd like to add? Make sure you leave a comment down below and of course, click subscribe to keep up right here on YouTube or sign up for the email newsletter at the link below. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram for my real-time thoughts on markets, analysis, and a whole lot more.